Hey there everyone, it's Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus Dry Docks, uh, here with Logan. And uh, it is the beginning to a new week. This is a new update video for our, uh, our weekly update to you guys to make sure that we uh, are actually working and not goofing off in the shop. It is the 15th of January and it is very cold outside. It's uh, right at about the freezing level, which is cold for the woodlands of Texas. Um, we got lots going on this week. Let's take a look at the projects. First and foremost, if you are following my build blog for this 80 inch DeBoer Sea View, you will know that uh, having some challenges with the trimming of this boat. It is massively unstable in surface trim. Uh, reason being uh, that this little ballast tank is way down low in the bottom of the hull, which uh, creates a, a nice force that wants to flip the boat upside down and uh, do the backstroke, which might be a little disconcerting to the little people inside said boat. Um, I have uh, some brass stock on order and we're gonna be uh, securing that to the keel. It's gonna be about 5.7 pounds worth. Uh, and then we'll be putting in foam to offset it. It'll be interesting to see what it does to the waterline, but we're gonna need to compromise that in order to gain stability. Um, I can float it at the crack water line, but it'll it'll be listing left and right. And uh, I got into a little bit of a heated battle with a uh, an armchair RC sub builder on YouTube. I'll have to tell you about this one. Um, he was uh, very very knowledgeable about this experience, despite the the fact that he has never built an RC submarine. I do appreciate comments and advice from anybody and I'll certainly weigh it but uh, he was absolutely adamant that everything I'd done was wrong you never use foam in an RC submarine don't you know never uh, and that he's been building um, RC surface boats and steam engines for a really long time and he was very qualified to tell me how to build this um, so just wanted to throw this out there I'll accept uh, advice from anyone but please don't tell me that everything I'm doing is wrong if you've never built an RC submarine uh, just throwing that out there but we're gonna get this licked we're gonna get some weight in there it's not gonna be coming until the end of the week so it probably won't be at least till the end of the week before we can throw this back in the water in the meantime we are gonna be working on a cosmetic little back plate for this big foam block which sits behind the control room because right now the control room uh, is backed by a nice big pink wall, which uh, is not very Navy-esque. Could at least be blue or green or something. But uh, we are going to, if we can figure it out, take a picture of the inside of this beautiful control room that Logan built print it out as a photo, put it on waterproof sticker paper, and put it on the back of the foam block. So when you put that in place and you look in, hopefully the eye will be tricked into thinking that it's bigger than it actually is. Uh, we're continuing on the 1 6th German Seehund full RC torpedoes with contra rotating propellers. I, like an idiot, forgot to make allowances for mounting holes. To bolt this on so I'll probably have to change that today and get a new print going. Um, this forms some challenges because these props are permanently adhered to the shafts which makes installation very tricky. Um, but we're gonna keep going on that hopefully by the end of the week we'll be testing this in the pool. Uh, flying sub where are we at with this? So last time we ran into a bit of a problem because with the 45s, they were occupying the same space as the corners of the watertight compartment back here. It makes it a little hard to put in. So what we're doing is I've marked off, let's see if I can find the mark on this, marked off about half an inch on the back of these, lop it back, see if we can install them a little bit closer to these inserts, hopefully letting us Slide the 45s in, and that'll kind of fix our propulsion problems. We are also 
in order to avoid having to put on the 24-ish bolts on and off every time you want to get access to it, are going to hope to install something like an end cap. However, I think we're going to have to do something threaded because you mentioned if we pressurize the hole. Yeah, uh, or we just disable the ballast system, which I think will be easier. <laughs> just unplug it and not use it. Because, why? Well, if you pressurize the inside, ballast caps don't really have much of a strength against pressure from this way. Yeah, they'll pop off and then flood the compartment. Yeah. And why why am I not overly concerned about not using the ballast tank? Uh, oh yeah, the ballast tank's way too far back. Uh, if you flood it, the whole thing's gonna sink tail end first, and if you uh, empty it, the whole thing's gonna rise tail end first. Yeah, it'll float on the surface like a, I don't know, nose down. <laughs> like, really nose down. Uh, and honestly, the flying sub does not need a ballast tank. You know, it's, it, it doesn't need to be sitting on the surface with a ton of freeboard. You know, this this is a great pool toy, and the fun is driving it underwater. Um, and then you got the battery situation figured out, right? Yeah, well, not too bad. Just installed two different 4S uh, 1500s. So that should give us a ton of voltage for everything. Run these nice big... Bilge pumps. Impellers. Yeah, bilge pumps. I almost called them impeller. That's only a part of them. Yeah, and those are those are 1,500 milliamp, but there's two of them, and we're going to rig them in parallel, which will give us how many amps? Uh, it's too early for math. <laughs> <laughs> Three. 3,000. When you rig in... When you rig in parallel, the amps add up, add up and when you have put them in series, the volts add up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's going to be cool. This this is going to be in the water by the end of the week. Actually, I think by the end of the day, we're going to be pretty close. Well, let's see if everything goes well. Looking at this, it's very slightly off-center, so I'm a little nervous that even if we cut back the oh. tips of these, I think it's hitting like basically right here, so no matter where we install... No, um, okay. Back. Well, we'll take we'll take a look at it. No point stressing until we get there. Um, last but not least, um, some of you may recognize this box. Uh, reason being, lots of kits were shipped out in these white boxes by uh, a certain company that sold model kits. Um, if you know what it is, you think you know what it is. Drop your guess below. Don't play ahead and then put it back in. Come on, be honest. If you can identify the manufacturer of that based on the box and the state of the box, let's see your answer. Ready? Four, three, two, one. 30 second parallel. If you said 30 second parallel, you would be right. So uh, 30 second parallel has been out of business for a long time. Um, I'm guessing this particular kit um, is probably about 30 years old. Um, the fact that this is still in its original box is uh, pretty impressive, actually. Owner sent this to us to take a look, see if we can uh, evaluate it for the possibility of refurbishment and installation of a new cylinder. All I've done so far is split the tape. I've not opened it up. We're going to do that right now and see what we are working with. Let's take a look at the box, but before we see what's inside, I want you to hear what it is we're working with. And this is, this is causing a little bit of consternation. Yeah. Nothing so at sense. the very least, I'm thinking this was not overly well packaged, <laughs> but let's, let's see what we're actually dealing with here. Oh, there we go. just kind of loose oh boy oh boy all right let's uh take this stuff i'm gonna move this and then we're gonna take things out one at a time don't worry it's under warranty we're safe <laughs> excellent we've got 30 days to send it back let's take a look one thing at oh my lord at a time Let's start with this. Oh, hey, it has an oar on one side, so you can swim. <laughs> yeah, row, 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 row your boat. Oh, I love the sound of metal squeaking when you turn the linkages. 
Nothing like that noise. Oh, mm. shoot. Wait, he's got a freaking tandem in here. Yes. Because he was going to put... Uh, he's got it. He bought a tandem radio from us. So, 30-second parallel. They, they actually had a gas-powered torpedo system back in the day. Uh, and I believe it was a Freon. Yeah, that's, a, that's an air conditioning um, attachment right there. Uh, a Freon-based system. Now, this, oh, this is all broken free. Or maybe it's supposed to unbolt. No. Oh, no, it's broken free. Um, and it looks like they got linkages here for the torpedo shutters, too. They're spring-loaded. So that's the pressure vessel for the, the torpedo system. And then we got the watertight box. Now, like I said, the lid he was working with, and it just, like, exploded. He sent me pictures, and, um, yeah, it completely exploded. Looks like he was going to power it with this 12-volt, 1.8-amp battery pack. We got some servos. We've got another battery pack. we got loose parts. we got triple servos in the back. A big motor. Holy, look at that thing. Wow. Old-fashioned stuffing tube. You put grease in there, and uh, it fills that all up with grease to make a quote-unquote waterproof seal. That's nice and free. Spinning, that's a soldered prop, home, you know, hand-built prop. Have to check all those linkages out. So, if I remember correctly, I've converted these before. This waterproof box, whatever adhesive... Uh, they were using back then uh, it is like indestructible <laughs> so you actually have to grind the box out of the hull you can't just like pull it out it's pretty incredible all right so that's our lower hull now let's take a look at our upper hull Oh, this is painful because somebody actually did a lot of work in making some nice details but look at the tops just smashed this is what happens when there's improper packaging so the entire thing has been just crushed down it's all split and he invested in some beautiful 3d printed detail pieces here oh yeah and this is just like paper thin plastic. This is a vacuum formed plastic kit. So it was not strong to begin with, but obviously fell down like that and just, and just crushed it. So that's exciting. Bolts on like that. Let's see if we can keep this thing rolling over. There we go beautiful form they're beautiful boat and really really good performers because the the rudder is directly behind the propeller um giving you really really good authority over your yaw uh and then the really big dive planes so it, it actually works uh quite well um all right we've got weights Torpedo. torpedoes but that have been Utterly and completely smashed in the back. That's cool. Big nozzles on that. Holy! These would have gone like rockets. I usually use a 1 16th brass tube. This is like 8th inch. Whoa. Yikes! Oh, more torpedoes. More parts of torpedoes. Some plastic broken plane guards these are shattered these are resin that goes there and that one's broken somewhere too another torpedo. another torpedo this guy was armed for bear some original linkage two-sided tape some styrene no there's a the other dive plane Hinges. I'm just looking for good stuff in here. There's some wheel collars. Some. Oh, there you go. A radar loop. 
I assume. 3D printed detail parts for the sail. Bridge, conning tower, I should say. Yeah, and then just like the original rubber gasket and a bunch of brass rods. Yikes! So this is a really good example of having to make a determination about whether it is more labor and cost effective to simply start over from scratch or to attempt to refurbish what you've already got here. Now, the, uh, the Bronco kit in 35th scale is just a little bit smaller than this and it is a prime candidate for RC conversion. Um, has a lot more detail. It's actually more robust. Uh, as you saw with this, this is just really like, oh, this is all separated and broken too. Yeah. You know, if, if we moved forward with this, all of this would need to be cut out. I, I'd probably need to generate some 3D files to rebuild this area in here. I'm thinking, you know, just to take this out is probably, you know, an hour or two's worth of work, um, which would get you a long way with a Bronco kit for, for building it up. What I need to do is have a heart to heart with the uh, owner and uh, figure out what he wants to do. Um, you know, even just making this a display model would take a bit of doing to, to redo all of, of that. You know, all I can do is, is quote time and, and money, and then he's going to need to figure out whether or not it's worth it to him to, uh, to do. The beautiful kits for their time, but, uh, you know, th there's probably a lot better options out there right now. That's just my opinion. We'll see what he says. That's all we can do. So now you see the kinds of things that we get to get uh, a first glimpse at out of the box. All right, we've got we got our plumbing done. Boy, it looks good. It looks awfully good. Um, but now we got moment of truth. We got to figure out if this box is going to drop in place without hitting our plumbing. I'm mostly worried because one side is slightly off center compared to the other. Uh -uh, it's looking promising to me. Yep. Oh good. hell yeah. Just got the back another inch. There we go. Nice. Oh yeah, we got like uh three sixteenths of an inch on one side and quarter inch on the other. Nice. I think all that's left now is at least in terms of testing, reinstalling the top and then installing the linkages. Then we can do a function test. Once the function test is done, then we can start doing the add-ons, such as the quick access to the battery. Yeah, and we can do that separately because the, the lid is a separate piece, which is a good thing. So we need to bolt down the bilge pumps before we forget. Tighten them down so they don't slip backwards. Yep. And I also have to build a connector to convert these into Deans because that's Deans and this is XC60. Yeah, so it'll be a, a double female XT60 into a single female well, Deans. I steal this and change, change that to uh, to a, there you go. Because yeah. personally, not a fan of Deans. Yeah, that's perfect. No, Deans, uh, XT60s, the, the XT line handles a lot more current than the Deans do. Remember we, we burned that one up with the Delphin? Yep. So yeah, just... Flip that over to a uh, female XT60. And, and we're good. Yeah. So pull the box, tighten down the bilge pumps, and then we can start organizing cables. And this we're almost why, there. This is why I also like to have just random stuff around. Yeah. We built this however long ago, and it's been sitting up there. And yeah. I've used it as a template when I built other ones, but like four years after we made it, now we get to use it. There you go. First off, this is the. Uh, uh, First go at the contra rotating motor assembly. So this is the uh, connecting assembly that I fabricated that allows the rear motor to bypass the front motor to power all of the um, propellers individually. 
Now what I need to do is make a mounting bulkhead that goes across, holds it in place, also encompassing a servo that will go forward and activate our rudders. So I've done up my sketch and uh, I am going to go ahead and um, make those files this afternoon and get on the printer and hopefully get it printed out for tomorrow morning. Um, this is the lid to the flying sub. So this is the clear, I'm assuming this is polycarbonate um, tube section from that thing that Logan showed earlier. That's the end cap that'll go on. It'll just go bloop and be uh, all waterproof and easy to access. Yep, I got the lighting done. I'm working on the linkages right now. Uh, the slate hump on these is getting in the way of the linkages just a little bit because they have to sit flat. Oh, I see. Okay, so you ground so, them out a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got the one side done. Just about to do the other side. Uh, this is a little bent out of shape. It took me two seconds to go ahead and straighten that out. Then I've got to get the right size uh, wheel collars so that I can attach these onto these. So really, we just tested it. It was everything was functional. So what's left before we start stuffing foam in here? Once you're done with the lid, pretty well just final function test of throwing it in the water and making sure that all the functions like operate while the water is around it. Uh, maybe pressure testing this independent. Make sure there's no leaks. Side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Cause I am a little nervous. It's a little old and it's got a lot of like, grime on it. So maybe before we dunk it, I'll get like a cloth. Pull that alcohol. off, wipe it down really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wipe it all down, make sure it doesn't have anything. We gotta get bolt or uh, nuts. Don't we need to get about a hundred nuts? Yep. Oh, that's not in place. That's good. So, yeah. Still a little bit to do, but man, probably tomorrow, tomorrow. we can get it in the water, depending on the weather situation. We have a little bit of snow outside. The only thing it's stuck to is like our blankets that we laid out to protect our plants, but it snowed. Snowed in Texas. Snowed in Texas, y'all. So, that's it for today. Other than... Uh, emails and uh, digital files. So, see you tomorrow. A very happy Tuesday morning to everyone. Um, we are back in the shop, although it is a little frigid outside. The uh, news says about 18 Fahrenheit outside, which is cold by anybody's standards. Um, but we've been working a little bit here in the cool-ish shop. Um, I'm gonna show you my torpedo assembly because it's coming along pretty good. So this is what we've uh, what we've got. I've got a like a mounting flange inside. I don't know if you can see that or not. There you go. Mounting flange inside for some stainless standoffs, and those have been sandwiched in with a backer plate, and uh, the motor is all locked in. Everything is nice and free spinning. I've got the linkages for the rudder in place. Let me see if I can actuate this. There we go. Look at that. How talented I am. Um, so now what I got to do is test this assembly for free motion by hooking up two electronic speed controllers to these brushless motors and we'll check that. And the other benefit is once we hook it up, we can just let it run and that'll break in the drivetrain. So if there is any binding, it'll help loosen everything up. And then I need to make a little watertight compartment that'll interface with this and uh, connect to the, the linkage there. So I'll have to put servo in there, the receiver and the battery and the two speed controllers. So looking good, one built, got to build the other one now, but uh, rather than forging ahead, you know, with both, now uh, we got proof of concept with one. All right, so everything has come along quite well with the flying sub. Just got done retouching up with the linkages. You can see if you look a bit carefully at the back, did a bit of sanding. Unfortunately, that wasn't quite enough. However, we just went ahead and moved the linkage over one inward. It seems to be working just fine now, and we actually have the identical amount of throw. So everything went pretty well with that. We noticed a bit of uh, slack in the directional thrust uh, back here. So we went ahead and we made probably the smallest part we've ever made. Mm, it's pretty tiny. We took a 332nd tube and 
it was carefully shaven down somewhere in the realm of what five sixty fourths and we have very carefully fit that into the hole and now we're just going to go ahead and lock it in on each side with a wheel collar and that Damn. should get rid of the slack completely because the the holes that were drilled were, were too big it was a big it was sloppy mm -hmm. so yeah we'll just slip that wheel collar on it should press the everything together and lock it down and should work all right, so we've got everything installed. So just for a bit of a demonstration, we've got, as you can see, an incredible amount of throw on the left and right axis. And of course, our vertical is quite nice. We were having problems with it bottoming out, uh, bottoming out but that just takes two seconds to fix with the endpoints. Looks good now. So I guess the last thing we need to do is um, drop that lid on, make sure we got no clearance issues. And we need to go get a whole mess of stainless nuts. Yeah. Because we don't have enough. It only came with like three. And we had like four extra. This is all of the hardware we've got in this little Dixie cup and that's mostly washers. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, we need stainless nuts and stainless washers. And then it'll be buttoned up and ready to go. Oh, show show the lid, see how that turned all out. Yeah, and this is a little like loose. It's a little too easy to pull off right now. We might need to do a wrap or two with Teflon. No, no, it's good, it's settled in. Yep, yeah, seems to, considering I can't even get my <laughs> A little screwdriver will pop right off, but anyhow, that goes right over the 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 the, the connections for the battery. It comes out easy from the back side. That's something. <laughs> All you need to do is just take the entire top off, so you can push it off. No, you know what we could do? We could make a little handle or something, so it's easier to get off. I was actually just thinking that, like a little handle, just so you can get your finger on it, because right now it's pure finger. Oh, there we go. Finger strength. Yeah. yeah. We just got to watch clearance. Make sure that we don't go above the. Well, I think we got we, lots of room, though. All we need is like a loop of like string, and the string will just pad down. Yeah, or like brass or something, a little brass handle. Anyhow, that's all. That's all wants and not needs. Um, yeah, cool. Oh, and what hap what happened last night? You remember we were talking about this when you were shutting down the shop? Oh right, uh, it's the value of uh, having your lights connected before your switch. So it's really easy when you have your boat and you flip the switch and you know you're putting your radio away and it's like oh, I'm flipping the radio around, nothing's happening. Right now, on any other boat, if I hadn't connected the lights beforehand, you'd just kind of think, oh, we're done. You can't see it. But it's pretty hard to miss, you know, the spotlights, especially if, you know, you're shutting down the shop, you turn the overheads off, and uh, the shop doesn't get too much darker. <laughs> Yeah, and that's really important, you know, especially if you've got electronics that are sucking juice, oh, like a like a remote switch and and that kind of thing. This boat might have been okay because it's, it's the physical. Yeah, this switch is actually connected not to main power but to the switches for the ESCs, and I'm I'm not sure if that's a an actual physical disconnect or not. But at any rate, it's not a good. <laughs> the other thing I like about this is it forces you to open the boat after a run so that if there's a, you know, a few drops of moisture in there, it's open and you are venting it out. Um, too many people get lazy. Oh, it's too hard to open up. I'm going to make a charging port so I never have to open it. That's about the stupidest thing that you can do, people. Always open up your boat after you run it. You need to have the um, venting to make sure there's no moisture trapped in your boat. There you go. It takes a little bit of effort, but we do have quick access. Now there you go. Find the... You just have to probably have like a set of pliers on you. With, uh, angle yeah, like we got, that's the balance, access to the balance ports for charging the lipos without having to undo 185 million nuts. So we're off to the hardware store. We're gonna grab some nuts, 
some washers, and yeah, I think we're going to be almost to the cosmetics part. Let's redo the paint a little bit. I wonder, I wonder how easy this masking tape is going to be to take off. I don't know how long ago that was put on there, but I'd be willing to bet it was a long time ago. It's probably pretty crunchy. I'm waiting for the day I do this and I just peel my nail off. I, yeah, I have such, like, paper-thin fingernails. It's, oh, oh, oh. All right, I think we're in luck. Are they frosted? Kind of yeah, they, I think they are. Cool. I was going to say we're going to frost them, but we don't need to. All right, well, we have a plan. It is Wednesday morning. Um, still cold, but it looks like it's going to be a nice sunny day today here in Texas. Um... Today, we are going to be testing the um, drive system for the torpedoes. Uh, I got some electronic speed controllers. I'm gonna rig up some little bullet connectors and we are gonna see if we can get those things spinning, uh, but most importantly, spinning smoothly. If so, we're gonna move on to building out uh, torpedo number two, uh, and then we're gonna be moving on to creation of watertight compartments for the receivers, speed controllers, and uh, batteries and voltage regulators and all of the other stuff that doesn't like to get wet. A couple other things that uh, happened yesterday. A good friend uh, and customer, Frank Salerno, um, he was a former model builder for Grumman back in the day. And this was back at the time that uh, they actually built things by hand. And he sent me a little gifty came in the mail yesterday. These are um, a bunch of different types and shapes and contours of files. Um, really cool. I'm excited. With, with this, we can build anything. So uh, we're going we're gonna to put this in our tool arsenal. And a uh, big shout out to Frank Salerno for thinking of us here at the Dry Docks. We'll uh, be using these in our upcoming builds. Other thing that happened now... Um, you guys probably remember that one of the things we want to do with Seaview here is create a little functional flying submarine. And these are the, the, the shell that we 3D printed. Now I got, I was perusing eBay a few weeks ago and I had found a remote control diving RC submarine, um, that was actually the right size to fit in the forward bay. Now my thought was, man, if, if we could convert this to uh, a flying sub shell, it would save us a lot of work because um, it was fully controllable from your smartphone or tablet. It had an onboard camera. It was really maneuverable. Um, the general size and shape was exactly what we wanted. This is what I got. So this is a Raze iSpy quote unquote submarine now um I, I just got this yesterday i played with it a little bit logan hasn't even seen this yet yeah so um it works actually pretty good i've had some issues with with trying to connect it to wi-fi but i really haven't played with it very much i got my little ipad mini charging right now this is the right size this is look at that i mean if we just knock like half a centimeter off the wingtips. This is going to be the exact right size to fit in the bay, the flying sub bay. Um, it'll, it tools around. It's got uh, differential steering, just like a uh, flying sub would have. And it's got a little camera on there, a little 720p digital camera. And you can get uh, live video feed. Two issues. Um, well, I, I the main issue is it doesn't dive. The, the topic description of this, the, the item description, literally said diving submarine. But all this does is it tools around on the surface like this, and it shows you what's underneath with the camera, which is, by the way, tiltable. Like, you can control the tilt in that. This was like $30 with shipping. Um, but it doesn't dive. And it's operated on wireless, which means it's uh, high frequency, which means... Um, if it dives, you would lose signal. So we're hooped. I, I was thinking maybe we'll like take it apart and see what kind of guts are in there, how it all works and everything. But um, 
uh, it's just not going to be worth it for the hassle. We'll just go back to the idea of triple brushless and proper rig up for that if I can make it work. Um, so a little disappointing. This would have been a, a pretty awesome off the shelf solution uh, for the boat, but um, just going to have to use it as a toy buzz around in the pool. I don't know. Let's talk to Logan and see what's going on with the uh, flying sub. All right, we're getting really close with the flying sub. At this point, we've got the box on, bolted on completely. The little... I can find purchase with my fingers. There we go. Little hatch opens up nicely, get access to power. I'm not sure if I want to disconnect the back or the front. It's kind of hard to get the front. But that can be personal preference for whoever ends up getting this. Uh, we still have a couple issues with how loose this is. You saw I could just pry it off with my fingers with relatively low effort. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to install a pressure testing port. See if this just pops off like a soda can lid. And uh, once that's on pretty well, we just need to make sure it floats in a somewhat stable fashion. It's got a lot of foam in the wings, but there's barely anything for a weight. So it's probably gonna sit really high in the water and not wanna go down. Mm -hmm. Good news is there's, uh, the box is raised slightly, so we could probably fit a good few, like, full length strips of, honestly, just scrap metal, probably, and get a ton of weight right nice and down the center line. Should keep everything nice and stable since the foam is nice and high in the wings. And if not, there's still plenty of room for foam over Ross. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I think it's going to be, that's a huge box. I think it, there's a lot of buoyancy here and a lot of buoyancy here. You know, could we, you guys see that way in there. I got some foam. I don't know if we can get that out without taking everything apart. I don't think it needs to be in there, but I, I'm going to say it's going to float like here, half, almost half out of the water. That's my guess, but we'll see. Um, pressure port, watertight integrity test and flotation test. So that should happen this morning. Yep. We, we might be zipping this thing around this afternoon. All right. Dump test number one. We've got our hose on. We've tried wrapping the uh, top with a little bit of Teflon. You can see that on there. Uh, torque down the screws. For a breath test, we know air is getting out somewhere, but it's either not a small enough hole that we can hear a whistle, or, well. <laughs> well, let's see. We'll dunk it in. I don't see a, like a, a good solid black band around that seal. I have a hunch it's coming from the... Oh, hey, I was wrong. It sinks. Whoa, where's that coming from? The main seal. Okay. Just in that one spot, though, hey? So it's the fifth bolt from the front. Okay. So first test of the uh, dual motor majigger did not go exceptionally well. Uh, motors and everything are all perfect. They got all the speed controllers rigged up and that's all good. There is, was apparently a little bit of binding going on in the coupler the, uh, that I have and it ended up um, at the exceptionally high speeds that we were testing at um, melting something inside and fusing the uh, parts together. So the inner shaft fused to the outer shaft. So I'm disassembling my motor bulkhead right now. Um, we're going to take it apart, take, pull the motors out and take a closer look at the coupler and see where it was rubbing and what fused might need to open things up in there a little bit the, the other thing that I realized um, 
is that uh, come off, come off. Um, the props are really out of balance. Uh, there was quite a bit of vibration, which is not ideal, uh, obviously. So I don't know what I'm going to do there. Those are big props. I, I can check and see if I've got anything that I could rig up as a contra rotating, but then the taper is going to be all different and everything, but I'm going to have to see what this thing looks like. All right, diagnosis has been complete, Ed, complete Ed. <clears throat> the amount of friction on the inside of the stuffing tube here melted the plastic coupler and plastic flowed in and fused uh, the inner shaft to the outer shaft, which is super exciting. Um, I don't like this. Obviously, we've talked about this before. The KISS principle is always best. Now, <clears throat> the simplest solution would be something like this. And I just grabbed the motor. This actually would allow me to use the same motor mount uh, as I did previously. Now, it's got a little bit of flex to it, which might not actually be a bad thing. Um, these props... I was hoping to repurpose. Um, you can see one of the blades is already snapped off. So these are not ideal either. The primary reason being that they're severely out of balance. Um, I'm really seriously considering dropping the dual shaft contra rotating idea. Going with a single motor, single prop solution for the sake of simplicity and reliability. I still think this thing's gonna go like a rocket. The big concern is torque roll um, because we've only got about, um, whatever that is, about three and a half inches uh, of space to work with. Um, I think it would still be okay. And I think the increase in reliability would probably make this the proper way to go. Um, now, the, those torpedoes um, use four-bladed contra-rotating props. This is an, uh, an actually a 48-scale Akula, no, Alpha prop that I had. Um, but it looks pretty badass on the back of this torpedo. I get rid of the vortex attenuators um, on the back. Um, or I'll, maybe I'll take a look for something off of the shelf. Maybe I can find something on eBay uh, in a brass prop. I don't have anything here that big. So back to the drawing board. Uh, you know, I would love to get these working. Maybe I'll take another look at this. The coupler itself worked really good. It's just I have to rethink the uh, inner outer shaft scenario. So, figured out what the problem was on our little box here. We had one screw where the bottom of the bolt, or the head, came loose on the inside, which meant that any attempt to tighten it was just spinning the, uh, spinning the whole thing. So, it wasn't tightened down at all. I was hoping it would be an easier fix, but it turns out the threads were bound. So that turned into a bit of a process to, uh, not only get the top off, but then get the bolt out to re-thread it, because we don't have any bolts of its same size, and then re-glue it. So, that was a lot of work for one tiny little thing, but that's done. It's got some nice glue on there. Should be nice and sealed. Once that's properly and fully sealed, which will probably end up being by tomorrow, retest it, and uh, I think we should be ready to start properly uh, looking at this thing. Here is a little uh, PSA, public service announcement. Um, again, we talked about this before. Always, always, always wear your safety glasses. Now, we were, and this is not about getting something in your eyeball, but I was snipping the uh, fins, the vortex attenuators, off of that little prop. Can I see that for one second? I just want to show people um, the little fins off the back right here. And I was just using snippers. Um, 
and I had it down. I was making sure everything was facing away, snipped it. And from a distance of three feet away, that piece went flying out and um, skewered Logan's drink and punched a hole in the side of it. And there may have been a little bit of leakage. Um, you can imagine what that would have felt like if that was pointed at you or the guy across the room from you. So again, just be careful. Um, you know, a little common sense and uh, um, safety first. All right, we're testing the new motor setup for the torpedo. We got that big alpha prop back there, uh, 790 kilowatt brushless motor, big flex coupling. I actually kind of like these. Jason brought these over because he ordered them by accident on Amazon. Um, got this rigged up and uh, we're just gonna give it a little test and see what kind of thrust this thing is gonna put out. We've got the paper here for reference as to just how <laughs> kind of crazy it is. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure if you kick that up to full power, I would probably be able to feel that if uh, CV wasn't here, probably all the way back to here. Probably still can, it'll flow around CV. Oh, yep. I can feel it pretty well. Let's see here. Yep, you can see the paper still flexing pretty well all the way back here, including behind C view. Yeah. So we're going to need to tone that down, obviously, a little bit. <clears throat> and trimming the actual torpedo may be fun. But I feel way better about this. It's super smooth, super efficient, super simple. Uh, I think I think we're gonna go with this. All right, so for pure cosmetics, we took a picture of the back half of our bridge, got it on a little sticker, put the sticker on some acrylic, and now we've got a little insert. Lines up pretty well. Colors are a little like desaturated, admittedly on purpose. The point is for you to focus on what's in the front and the detail that's left. But uh, lines up pretty well, looks pretty good. Can't really put it in at the moment because it's got some wet glue in there, but we'll get some uh, pictures and some footage of everything once it's all back together. And you can look forward to that. Oh, 48th Nautilus came in. And just to show how kind of awesome everything is, Take a quick guess as to how long it took us from absolute scratch to put together just this. Maybe like three hours, maybe four. Yeah, about like an hour and five minutes. I think we finished unboxing this around like one o'clock and it's about two o'clock now. And mo most of that was just kind of, you know, the first time figuring it out. And we're going to do a full, a full build video for people, right? We just gotta, you know, get good at it for ourselves first. Nothing more awkward than watching a how-to video and hearing somebody go, whoops, so don't do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but this, uh, this is gonna be awesome. And uh, you retain access to the interior if you're gonna be doing either a, a static or an RC. And look at the tolerance. It's, it's spinning itself out. It's just, it's just awesome. So you, to, to gain access, you just pull the, the ram out, just like you guys have seen me do before, and the whole top lifts right off. So really, I designed this more for RC, but it will build into an absolutely gorgeous um, display model, which is the first build we've got. Display, uh, display boat. It's, this feels bigger than... 48. Yeah. I don't know, but I don't care. Whatever it is, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous. And it's so easy to put together. I mean, half of this stuff has been set and forget. Like all of these hatches, or not hatches, the mesh that's on right now, just... It's like friction fit, basically. Pluck it on, take it off. And I, I revised these files. These are totally different than Mark's original files. Well, not totally different. I, uh, I shrunk all of these rakers so they're the correct width now. And uh, all the scuppers are open now. All the deck grating is open now. Um, I even opened up the scoops 
in the front. So those are fully functional as well. So yeah, starting probably next week, we're gonna be hardcore on this for a display. Logan's excited to do more painting, more detail work. And uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's designed so that all the breathers um, raise and lower and the hatches extend and retract, so. Oh, yeah, wait. One on the top. It's a friction fit and it's just fully functional. Just lift and lower. Camia, camera obscura hatch. Yeah, so tomorrow. Well, no, next week. Soon. All uh, right, so back with the flying sub. So after our first dunk test, turns out pretty stern heavy. We figure it's because we moved the engines back a little bit just to make room for the connection. This point, we figure we can just kind of scoot them back forward, back to where we have a nice center of gravity and replace the empty area with this tube, which it originally came with. Should work fine. The tube was designed to originally slip over the connector that we had in there. Just need to stick it inside of the brass and everything should work out for that. Uh, the missing or damaged bolt has been replaced. So I got top back on here and we had a bit of fun with the laser engraver we recently set up. So we now have little laser engraved kind of coins. We're hoping to stick one of these onto the top of here for cosmetics. But we kind of realized we just opened a little bit of a can of worms of like all the different cool stuff we could do with a laser engraver. We also spent a good like 45 minutes stinking the whole house up. Yeah. <laughs> with uh, lots and lots of uh, burnt plastic fumes. So that's pleasant. Gonna have to figure out how to uh, fix that, but. In the meantime, figured out we have a lot of fun, uh, fun stuff planned ahead. All right, we are outside at the top secret testing facility and uh, talking torpedoes. So these are the first of the new batch of torpedoes. Um, again, based uh, partially on Ed's files and partially on my files and hybridization of all of them. I've got both uh, Mark 48s and uh, Mark 17 torpedo. So the old World War II style and the uh, new more modern style weapons in here. Now, two of the torpedoes are fully hollow and two have filled stern cones. Now, if you follow my channel and you're watching our initial torpedo testing, um, you'll remember that the uh, torpedoes that we were shooting off earlier were really positively buoyant. So, um, I'm hoping that by filling the stern, we will get a little bit more weight in there uh, and get something closer to neutral buoyancy. So we're going to drop them in and see what happens. Our dog is checking out the vulture sitting on our fence. <laughs> you get her, Gracie. Get him. Get him. You get him. Good girl. Get it. There you go. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah, you get out of here. <laughs> One and two should just float. So, I mean, they're not overly buoyant. They're about two thirds, almost three quarters of the way up. Um, you know, once you put gas in there or butane, you know, that's going to be a little heavier. So that was the Mark 48. Let's try the Mark 17. Now this in theory should be more buoyant because there's more volume in there. And it is, it's about closer to two thirds of the way up. Okay, now filled stern. All right, okay, I'm liking it. Again, we add a little gas in there, liquid gas.
Interesting. I like it. I think it may be time to go get the little launcher and see what happens. All right, Logan is making a little repair because we lost a couple flanges to uh, bolt our torpedo together. I really like the way that prop looks. It's completely non-scale, but it looks pretty badass. Got another one ordered. It'll probably be like end of the month before it shows up. But I got lots of other things to work on in the meantime. Um, but yeah, he's drilling and tapping new holes so that the stern of the torp bolts on. We're printing a new uh, section. So the idea, I forgot, I'm surprised I didn't talk about this yesterday. This is just a piece of PVC pipe. So it's uh, you know completely hollow and solid. Um, I think what we're gonna do, I come up with a uh, bolt-on door waterproof dealy thing for here. And uh, it'll be removable with three bolts. You can pop it off. And so that means we are just gonna have the servo and the battery and the receiver just kind of connected to it. And you just unbolt it and take it off and it's connected to the stern uh, in the back here. And this is all going to be empty. Uh, and we will do one of two things. We'll either throw a whole mess of weight in the bottom here to offset all that buoyancy or potentially if that uh, um, spinning moment is too strong, we will um, bolt some keel weights on here. So from the topper sides, you'll barely see it. You won't be able to see it at all, but it'll provide a, a really strong riding moment for the torp uh, when it's cutting through the water. So that's exciting. And then Logan did uh, some reinforcement of the seams on this. So it's gonna be rock solid and bulletproof. We'll see, we'll get a little bit more put together here today after this stuff kicks off, which probably won't be until later. Uh, later in the afternoon. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it's only Thursday. It feels like Friday. It really does feel like Friday. And what, what, what are we waiting on on this thing? Oh yeah. We got, uh, one of these supports cracked loose. You can see on the bottom. So Logan fixed it, but we got to wait for the glue to set up, uh, before we can do anything about it. I also forgot. I was going to test these torpedoes, but I forgot. I literally just glued them together. So probably be a good idea to let the glue set before we start filling them up with pressurized gas. Always uh, a recommended procedure. Just got some goodies to deliver from my buddy. Um, did a little horse training. I'm anxious to see what exactly I got. He sent like one crappy little picture, but uh, maybe I'm hoping it's cool stuff. There we go. Batmobile. This feels bigger than the last one. Is it? I don't think so. I mean, our previous one was pretty big. I don't know. I think it's a little bit bigger, actually. I don't know. But yeah, Craig uh, rigged these up with servos to raise and lower the machine guns. Hell yeah. I don't know anything about RC cars or trucks or anything. But this is a four wheel drive. This is a front chassis. Full suspension, steering, receiver box, and uh, yeah, four wheel drive. Let's take a look at this thing. Oh yeah. 
We've got holes for the LEDs all drilled. Those wheels look awesome. This is all magnetic. We could use a little more sanding, but all, all in all, this is actually really, really good. All right, happy Friday. It's uh, bright and early, about 8.30 in the morning. It's not too freezing out here. And uh, we are really, for the first time, going to be dunking flying sub in the water to see where it floats. Now, Logan moved pumps yeah. forward. So we're hoping it's not going to be so tail heavy. So let's see what happens when we put it in. We got a little bit of foam. We think it's negatively buoyant um, altogether, so it's all a matter of balance. Still That's tail good. heavy. Very now just just let it go. Just let it go. Will it sink or is it just keep let it let it go? Yeah, it's only slightly sinking once it's down. So it's almost neutrally buoyant, right? Yep. Just super tail heavy. All right, so we got to add a little bit of foam in the back. So let's let's get it up on the counter here, and we'll see what we can do. All right, well, we've gotten a little bit more foam in the back. It's looking way more stable forward to back. A little bit loose on the uh, left and right writing moments, but we figure if we add this little bit of weight you see on top, it should sit super nicely. It's listing a little bit right now, but that's just because the weights are on top. Top, of it. yeah. Once you add them to the bottom, should be sitting nice and good. We still have plenty of room due to the mounting brackets on the bottom, so we can put those on. And everything should look pretty good. Back to the shop. Back to the shop. So a little uh, diversion here for a minute because I'm excited about them. I am playing around with our little scale torpedoes and um, ran into a challenge. So. This is the launcher assembly. Um, and the way this basically works is you set your torpedo back, pull the plunger, and uh, away it goes. This part is working perfectly. This, which is outside of my control, this is the filler valve for the butane, which was working perfectly until a few minutes ago. And now it's jammed open. It uh, has decided, for whatever reason, to not seal itself after you remove the butane um, canister. So I gotta pop this off and put a new one on, and hopefully that will fix it. Because our preliminary test, we had one shot, right, Logan? Yeah, one really clean, good shot. One clean, good shot, uh, and then this got messed up. So let's see what we can make happen. All right, torpedo testing time. The uh, the new valve is in there. I don't know what happened, but the old uh, seal on the top just popped right out. But it's fixed. This is what we're gonna be doing here right now. We've got four torpedoes, two Mark 48s and two Mark 17s. Uh, I am going to fire the empty torpedoes first, Mark 48 and then the Mark 17, and then the ones with the filled tail cones, Mark 48, Mark 17. We're gonna see how they behave. Uh, I'm going to start from here. I'm going to shoot them off towards the cow over there. Uh, ideally, hopefully, they will end up um, on the shallow part there where we don't need to go swimming for them. Um, this launcher, I ran out of half inch brass tube, so I've got some on order that are going to be here on Sunday. Uh, so right now it's just going to be coming straight out, which means upon launch it may be doing some squirrely things because that tube's not there to guide it. We'll see what happens. I'm just interested to see what it does. So let's give it a try. Hollow Torpedo Mark 48. Preliminary test from two inches. Three, two, one, go. That's interesting. <laughs> it dove. Just decided at the end to uh, do a little dive, which is interesting. Okay, fair enough. Empty torpedo testing in three, two, one. Firing pins. Whoa. 
Oh, or good. Just like went straight down. You do one. Whoa. <laughs> well, that's easy retrieval. Straight down. Not what I was expecting. Not just straight down. It whipped around and fired back. It's like a suicide torpedo. Friendly. Oh, look at how straight that is. Well, that was by far the best. All right, you. None of that. Let's do it. That's better. And down it goes. I'm going to gather them up. I want to do one more volley of all four. And then we're going to make a determination. My <laughs> feeling is that the torpedoes are going to be completely and utterly random where they go. Let's see what happens. I didn't really notice a big difference in performance between the two, did you? I mean, both of our filled ones tend to go a little bit straighter. Yeah. All right. Three, two, one. Really, right at the end, it, it does a little dive. Interesting. Hollow body. Three, two, one. Straight down. It's come back. It's come back. <laughs> it's coming home. <laughs> All right, good boy. <laughs> That's the upgraded trained torpedoes. For three hundred dollars more than that, you can even get the ones that reload themselves. Three, two, one. So interesting at, at the end when they're at their lightest they dive down last tests of the day in three two one well oh, by far the best <laughs> even managed to hit the other one that was by far the best all the way to the other side of the pool and stops in a perfectly straight line all right we're gonna gather these things back up and we're gonna do a little uh, follow up with our thoughts. Okay, back in the shop. Um, thoughts about the torpedoes overall? The filled ones seem to be better than the hollow ones. Yeah. Better consistency. Uh, I, I agree. The, the hollow stern torpedoes, both in the Mark 17 and the Mark 48, they went like pretty straight, but then at the end they dove. Which, I don't know, is the weirdest thing to me. You know, by that point, most of the contents of the tube are air. So it's not like there's liquid sloshing. Um, I, I wouldn't think. Very strange. But um, the filled torpedoes actually work pretty good. Um, once they're out, they go really straight. All of the torpedoes go pretty straight. They weren't, they weren't like fishtailing all over the place. But by far, that was the best. The Mark, the Mark Seventeen, and I think it's a, a longer body. You got more liquid in there, so it's a slightly uh, heavier torpedo. But the longer body make it more stable. And it was fins added quite a bit as well because the yeah. was the only one that went consistently straight. Yeah, that's the the difference. Obviously, in the stern, the the Mark Forty Eight has the shrouded propeller in the back, whereas the Seventeen has the uh, the fins that are right in the flow. Of water so this is what we need to do I'm gonna modify the files and just make these solid parts and then um, realistically I think this is ready to go so the only other thing that needs to be done um, in order to put a, a kit out is um, rigging this up for use with a servo and, and basically it's all ready because uh, it's just set up to have a little hook and then the servo just pulls the breech back like this I'd say all in all, that was a fairly successful test. Um, we just need to rig this up in practical application, put it in a boat. Um, I, I have the, the 50th scale uh, alpha, which would actually work for that, but 
That's my personal boat, so I have no time to work on it. 48 scale to the Nautilus 48 scale. We could put torpedoes in the Disney Nautilus. That'd be fun. <laughs> I don't know where we put it, though. We have to put it in what, the scoops? Nautilus Mark II. Yeah, behind those scoops in the front. <laughs> you thought it was for water, you fool! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyhow, uh, successful testing, everything is looking good. Realistically, I don't know, man, maybe by the end of the month, beginning of next month, I, I might be able to, to start offering these. We'll see. The, the first ones would be like uh, tester versions. There's not going to be a lot of support, you know, other than these parts, but the actual implementation in whatever boat you have would have to be something that you would figure out. But the launcher mechanism itself, pretty bang on. I think this is going to work really good. Um, next Sunday I'll have the, or this Sunday I'll have the um, launcher themselves, like the torpedo tubes, uh, and I think that'll make a difference for the launch mm -hmm. stability. Um, and then another thing I wanted to mention with this, I went with a slightly thicker hose and it wasn't just because this was the only hose I had. Um, it was because it slipped perfectly over the, um, butane fill valve without any modification necessary. And, um, filling this up means that when this, um, breech is pulled back, all of that liquid in the tube is going to get expelled into the tube so it's basically a, a just like the the normal torpedoes are the the real torpedoes are there'd be air propelled out of the torpedo tube so and that's my reasoning and i'm sticking to it all right ongoing work with the torpedoes so my uh bulkheads have all been printed and installed so you can see we got little studs in there that the top is going to screw down to. And if you take a look in there, there is a little lip on the inside. So the idea behind this is I am going to fill that channel um, up to that lip and hopefully a little bit beyond it um, with some very um, uh, uh, soft silicone rubber, some mold making rubber that I got right here. And uh, we're gonna make a seal in there and then the lid is gonna go on and then screw down with uh, a couple of nuts. And hopefully that will create a nice seal and still retain access to the interior of the torpedo through that door. So uh, what I'm gonna go ahead and do, you mix this one to one. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then pour it in and uh, we'll see what that looks like after I'm done. And here is the finished, well, almost finished, seals for the uh, end caps there. Oh, I got a little goober. Let's just wipe that off before it gets sold. There we go. Oh, it looks so pretty. Um, so we're going to let that harden up, and then uh, we will go ahead and uh, put the end caps on and see how that interference fit ends up working. So we're going to let that cure up, see what happens. Gracie, get away from there. You're going to knock them over. Crazy dog. And in the meantime, Logan is uh, trying to figure out why our flying sub won't start. We brought it outside to test it, and it wouldn't turn on. Any preliminary thoughts? Uh, I've only just gotten the top off so far. I mean, just taking a surface level look at it. I don't see anything wrong with it. But... I'll start tugging at wires, following the connections back, see if there's any damage, see if there's any water logging, and uh, pray that the receiver didn't just crap out on us. Ugh. Yeah, that would suck, because we don't have another radio. All right, let's take a look. We are done for the day. It's uh, Friday afternoon, and uh, we're going to shut her down. We're going to clean up the shop a little bit, and... Um, call it a week but uh let's recap everything that we worked on this week because actually it was a pretty productive week i think so we got the uh torpedoes 48 scale torpedoes are looking really good tubing is coming on this weekend on sunday uh, which means probably monday we can finalize the launcher uh, get a build platform out there i think i'm going to throw a waterproof servo on there and just do proof of concept for a dual uh launcher system so uh if anybody has a 48 scale model um you know for example that 48th uh arc model kit is a is a great contender for that um these should work really well um 
you know? They, they're not perfect, but if you got your heart set on torpedoes, this would be the way to do it. Um, something else we just unboxed. I want to show you this. So this is a permit kit uh, made from the 3D files that I have uh, up for sale on my website. I got these professionally printed at the same place I got Nautilus printed. You could probably pick this up um, fully printed. Uh, and ready to assemble for, you know, $450, $500. If you don't have a printer and you want, uh, you know, a large scale boat like this, this is just, it's super high quality. Like, look at the details on here. Uh, I'm trying to find a better piece. Where are we at here? That had all of the hull scribing. So you see the torpedo shutters in there. But look at all the, all the details, all the little raised bolts and everything are in there the ballast vents safety rails um you know compared to a conventional fdm printer you know filament printer this is you know head and shoulders above the fitment is really really good so um that's just another option if you ever want uh, any of the kits let me know and uh, i can get a quote for you um, turnarounds usually within two weeks, which is uh, pretty cool. I'm excited about this. Nothing really happened this week other than the um, backdrop for the bridge or con control room there. Um, still waiting on those keel weights. They should be in probably early next week, I'm hoping. Fortunately, I have a lot of other stuff to keep us busy. In the meantime, Sihun torpedoes are coming along well. I'm going to have some serious thinking to do about joining the rear to the center and getting the linkage for the rudder all rigged up for that. I don't know. Maybe, you know, ultimately it'd be easier just to get a waterproof servo for that too. Hmm. Hmm. Thinking strongly about that. That may work much better. This is going to see a lot of progress next week. Um, it looks like kind of a schmozzle right now, but uh, it is going to go together really quickly once we sink our teeth into it. We probably only got what, Logan, like an hour into this kit so far? Uh, combine the, the resin, hour and a half. Yeah, not much at all to get it to, uh, to this stage. So based on what we found with this, I'm making a few minor changes. I had to shave this down for a perfect fit. Um, changing the scale of these because I ordered those wrong because I'm a dumb dumb. Um, but we are we are confident this is going to be a beautiful, beautiful kit uh, coming up. And uh, Logan is cleaning up a part here. Don't shoot me in the eyeball with that. So this <laughs> this is a scribing template for the Israeli Dolphin class 3D files that I had done before. So this is for Steve. And he wanted me to make a template. So if you look on the inside there, this fits over perfectly to the bow. You can see all of the old, you know, scribe lines and, and everything in there. And then from the outside, you can uh, just put it on, tape it down, and then scribe out all the torpedo shutters. So hopefully that'll work out really well for him. We're trying to clean this up. I have a lot of heavy duty supports on there. Um, yeah, we'll keep going on that. And then, Logan, where did we end up on your flying sub? Uh, we were just about to put it in to test out the new fitment of testing when one of the screws broke free of the bottom. So we got to get that re-glued, and unfortunately the glue for that is a sealant, and that takes a good while to set. So I don't want to bolt anything onto it and have it start spinning and gooping up everything. But in the meantime, we cleaned up the uh, wires, got that all nice, uh, mounted the foam using a little bit of silicon, so that should stay nice and good in there. Floated pretty well when we put it in last, so if we're very lucky, next time we put it in, we can start puttering it around. Yeah, Monday, I think. Weather permitting and work permitting, we'll get this thing in the water and see what it does. Uh moving around in there um what else i think that's it that's eno enough for a week i feel pretty good about that so we are gonna wrap uh up 
with that, um, as always, appreciate you guys uh, stopping by to check out the channel. If you do like it, please like and subscribe. It helps us out here a lot. Um, drop your comments below if you have any questions uh, or comments. And uh, if you do have a specific question and you want faster response, hit me up, bob at nautilusdrydocks.com anytime. I'd love to hear from you. With that, uh, on behalf of myself, Bob Martin, the RC sub guy, and have a great weekend. Catch you next week. <laughs>